Europe can uh, learn uh, more to be cooperative and uh, iron out its divisions, particularly between the North and the South. I think Europe can learn from itself. For instance, the Nordic cooperation is a very good example that Europe can learn for regional cohesion. And uh, it's not so much the monetary union and the other thing. It has to learn the harmonization of social policies, for instance, that the Nordic countries have. It's a good example to explore and develop between its territories. So there is a social dimension that is essential, and I think this could be part of an anti-poverty, uh, youth employment uh, policy that would bridge the gap between uh, education, training, and uh, the workplace, which is particularly endemic and of key importance in the Mediterranean countries. You will see that in Central Europe and North Europe, this gap does not exist. We have a different system of vocational education, lifelong learning, part-time work, uh, that creates a different system of, of employability, uh, that uh, this is the least striking thing in, uh, in Europe. Another thing is that it should engineer and bring better results of the European institutes, and this uh, I mean uh, particularly the CEDEFOP Institute in Salonika, the Eurofound in, uh, in Dublin, and uh, the Health and Safety Institute in Bilbao. Uh, although there is on paper a better organization, we haven't been able to see their impacts in uh, crisis ridden countries like. Uh, Italy and Greece to the degree that we would have liked. So they need more steering and more uh, application and transfer of good practices from one part of the countries to the other. Uh, I, in that sense, uh, Europe can learn from its own disparate uh, results and it could try to transfer, uh, particularly focusing on the issue of uh, exclusion, labor exclusion, unemployment and poverty uh, about successful policies in other parts of the European Union and perhaps other parts of the world. Uh, Brazil has been a very successful the first years of Lula in terms of uh, inclusion and poverty eradication. Uh, of course also New York is successful programs by which uh, all uh, young persons are entitled to a position in the daycare center, unlike Athens and unlike Greece, where we have many children don't have a space in the daycare center. Another thing is that there has to be social policy directed for particularly the young populations. Europe is a very is getting an age old continent. Aging is a big important. It's a big thing. We need to reform a policy addressed uh, to youth uh, question and to children and uh, I think for Greece uh, we should focus only on what happens to young people when they have access to education, learning, we have one of the highest exclusion rates uh, from the school system in Greece uh, and uh, we have also a huge uh, youth uh, unemployment, the biggest probably in, in the biggest in Europe and unemployment, of course, is not only for young, but also for uh, young minorities. We have a problem with minorities in Greece. And uh, we need to focus more on real, uh, uh, you know, not only research and application, but we need also to develop the services, because technically everything is the same as in Denmark, but we don't have resources. Uh, to apply and we need uh, more to do on that level. Uh, we have very scarce services on that uh, uh, field and because of austerity they eliminated, <laughs> they did the opposite, they eliminated all these scant support services that existed for the underprivileged and uh, poverty and uh, youth. Uh, they were eliminated for austerity purposes because the state had to uh, cut itself because it's considered uh, very big. That's, that was not true. Greece has a very small uh, social administration and uh, we have a high number of unemployed social scientists and I think there should be a re-engineering of this process because 
Economics outside society does not exist. So Europe has to reconcile economy and society, and I think the cooperatives and the social economy, it's something that has done uh, exactly what we need. And we need uh, to also find a way to, uh, to ground this in Greece, particularly through a different taxation system. We have to harmonize social economy uh, sector activities in, across the Mediterranean. Uh, in Greece, uh, this has been a big problem because we still have uh, an incomplete institutional system for the third sector. The third sector is not uh, organized and recognized institutionally as separate from the private and the public sector. So we need to strengthen civil society institutions through the social economy. Uh, and I think uh, this has to be the centerpiece of social development in Greece. It's not a peripheral. It's not that we have the capital market and, and then we have uh, the private market. The social economy is everything, so it's communal development. And I think Greece needs to develop essential community services in health, okay, education, and also in uh, inclusion. Uh, this uh, would create uh, an impetus for employability and uh, we need to actually compare and I think the European Union would uh, help by doing more comparative studies uh, between let's say Ireland and Greece and Portugal uh, certain dynamic sectors in those countries could benefit from knowing and transferring know-how to other countries uh, there will be more symmetrical relationships because right now we have an extreme asymmetrical we don't compare common things and at the end we have a disaster as it is and a lot of funding has been wasted and is being wasted because we don't have uh, a general understanding about uh, engineering the economy and society but uh, we need to be able to see that a cohesion policy is the basis of uh, a recovery so we need also to discover all these re resilient points that exist. We are very successful cooperatives in Greece, but nobody pays attention. They are sufficient enough to use them as a start for recovery. We have uh, uh, in uh, some uh, places like in Crete and in Chios and in other parts of North Greece and also in Central Greece, very resilient, very modern cooperatives that should be the beginning of a policy and intervention. But usually nobody pays attention to them and the money is directed to central authority areas who have no political, you know, no political connection with these cooperatives. And I think that is part of the problem. We need to get away from the existing political culture and to see how bottom-up institutions can be aided in becoming networking and also supplying what Greece needs. I think uh, this is uh, something that, I mean, in every country uh, whether, or every, you know, continent, uh, there are internal solutions that could be used for successful outcomes. And uh, uh, we have successful examples like in Mondragon, Trento, in Bologna, we have uh, world examples also in other parts of Europe that could be transferred and uh, could be applied. Uh, so this is uh, something, of, of course, Germany has fantastic examples of cooperative uh, banking and uh, energy cooperatives. Uh, Spain has uh, fantastic uh, agricultural cooperatives and uh, other areas of activity, also Italy. So we need to think uh, in terms of the social economy uh, how we engineer this community sustainability. And I think the big issue for Greece is how to develop sustainable communities uh, and actually see the successful examples that exist that are not uh, politically meaningful to the existing system. So we need uh, to be bipartisan uh, I'm not saying against any political line, but uh, we need to somehow focus on sustainable communities as uh, something that in the long run uh, 
uh, would give us a solution to the crisis and uh, it would be a win situation.